This is Michael with Field Tech Academy. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I terminate a pass-through patch panel, or maybe better describe it as a patch panel with blank square holes in it that you just do keystones with. It is one of the easiest types of patch panels. I'm also going to show you a couple of tricks that I use when I am running my cables so that when I get to the point of terminating the patch panel, I can look at my cables and I know, okay, this cable goes to this room, this cable goes to this room, etc. So let's get into it. I ran 14 cables at this site. They wanted black cable. Of course, black cable is hard to mark with a Sharpie. Got a set of electrical tape that different colors. I was able to go through and obviously I've got 14 cables. I only have five colors. The first set of cables that I ran, the first five, I just did a single wrap. After that, I started doing a two wrap. So two green, three green, three blue, two blue, single. You get the idea. And then as I pull it out of the box, I put tape on the box so I know which box it came out of. So once I got the cable pulled all the way to the destination, came back here, then I could actually cut it at the box, tape it the same on this end, and then I knew which cables are which so I don't have to tone and trace them. Now I'm gonna make a service loop up in the ceiling. Here I am coiling up a couple of rounds of cable to create a service loop. Now a service loop serves a couple of purposes. The main one being that you've got a fail safe. If you make a mistake, then you have a little bit of spare cable to unwrap and pull back down. Then of course, for future use, if someone comes in behind me in a year or two and needs to move the rack or make changes um, or shift the patch panel down at a lower point in the network rack, then they have the ability to have some extra cable with which to do that. So I've got my service loop in the ceiling. Now I'm pulling my cables in through the rack so that I can have a nice little cable path and then I'm going to start terminating the patch panel. I'll put this up in the ceiling later but at least now I've got it coiled off and ready so that my distances will all be the same and I've got this low enough so that I can actually see all of my colors. I've went around the facility and marked all of my cables looked at what my color code was, labeled them all in order so that they all flow around the building in a logical fashion. Now I know, using my map, which ones I'm going to put in port 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Now I can start terminating the patch panel. This is a brand new rack, so I'm having to put the nuts into the rack so that I can attach the patch panel. While I'm at it, I'm actually attaching the nuts for my switches and my other pieces of equipment so that I'm ready to go. Now I'm going to mount up my patch panel, but I'm going to just finger thread my nuts because I don't want to have this tight until I get all four points attached. Then you can actually tighten it down. I have a lot of slack left in my cables, and I did that on purpose because I'd rather cut off extra cable than to end up at this point needing more length. The first thing I'm going to do here is take my number one cable, and I'm going to lay it out and estimate the length, and I'm going to pull it through the patch panel, this is a pass-through patch panel, and get it ready, and I'm going to use it as a template to shorten up all my other cables. When I'm making the decision on where to cut this, I want to make sure that I've got my 90 degree turns and that I have left enough so I can cut off and strip down for my keystone. Bringing this cable over from the side all the way across to one means that this is going to be my longest cable. So I know I can use it as a template so I can shorten all this up so I'm not fighting with it all day. Before you cut, you want to make sure you've got your service loop in the ceiling. You want to make sure that you've got whatever you're going to do here for your backside, where you're going to make your hole. And then you calculate your distance and you know you're safe. 
because all the rest of them should be shorter than this one. If you've never seen a pass-through patch panel, these things are amazing. As you can see, once I identify my cable, I can bring it through and start planning my cable management. Now I look at my cables, I look at my tape markings so that I know which cable goes to port one, port two, etc. And then I'm going to position them and get them ready so I can cut them off and put the keystones on it. And I said this was a pass-through patch panel. It's actually a patch panel that has blank square holes and it allows you to take your keystones in from the back and just snap them into place. I should be done in the ceiling, so I'm going to cut my tile to allow that cable to come through. Since this is sitting on the wall, I'm going to have to cut at this paint line here. All right, now we've got our tile back. We can start cable managing down here. We should be done on the ceiling, making progress. You wanna bring your cables in from the edge and not just bring them straight through because you may have equipment that sits up on top that this is gonna block if it's right here in the middle. As much as possible, I try to use Velcro. Zip ties can pinch the cables and create problems down the road. But what I'm doing in this moment is just temporarily putting in a zip tie to hold it in its place. And I can still work with the cable and move it around. And then later I'll replace it with Velcro and make it more nice and tidy. We got a coil in the ceiling. Now we have a good cable path. Now all I have to do is terminate the keystones. The beauty of this pass-through style is that I can take this out and work with it, put a keystone on it and then snap it in and I'm done. I don't have to flip the patch panel around and punch it by hand every single time. Every brand has their own all-in-one tool. I happen to use Quick Jack. You'll slide the jack in and it'll terminate all eight conductors at the same time. Saves you from a lot of punching down and wearing your arm out. Whatever brand that you like to use, find their all-in-one tool, make your life much easier. I'm going to pull my cable out and now I'm going to strip it back. You can obviously use scissors. I like to use a pre-made stripper though. It seems to be a lot safer for not cutting the internal pairs. Over the years when I've tried to use scissors on the outside jacket, many times I've actually ended up cutting the internal conductors and then you don't discover it until you're doing testing and you got to redo the whole thing. So in my opinion, it's just a lot easier to use a stripper that is designed specifically for Cat5 and Cat6. Once you've stripped the outer jacket, depending on which brand and type of cable you have, you may have a thread in the cable and you may also have a plastic strip that is in the cable. You want to actually cut those off and get those out of the way. Then you'll separate your eight conductors I always try to keep my colors together, you know, like my blue, white, and my blue, green, white, and green. A lot of the cable brands, the colors are very, very faded, just not bold, where you can easily tell what they are. So keeping your pairs close together keeps you from crossing over maybe like the brown and the green or something like that. 
Then once you've got your pairs separated, you're going to take your keystone, and your every keystone is different, every brand is different, but they're all going to have the color layout on the side. You just need to make sure that you're looking at your keystone and look at the color layout and make sure that you're matching your pairs to the layout. And we're typically using the B standard. A standard is not typically used in most cases. Once you have all eight conductors laid in, use your all-in-one tool. And just like that, you're punched down. On the pass-through patch panels, just bring it in from the back. Clip side down. There you go. Rinse and repeat 24 times, or however many cables you have. You want to bring the end of the jacket right up to the base of the keystone. You do not want a lot of your cable conductors to be exposed. You want as little of that exposed cable as possible. If you have long tails before you punch it down, that's not a big deal. You're going to take each one individually and make sure you match up the colors like we talked about before. Lay them all across. That way you're prepared for your punch down or your punch down tool. And in this case, with our nice all-in-one, we're just going to slide that in and crimp all eight conductors at the same time, throw away the tails, and as you can see, that jacket is right up at the keystone. Always remember to put your retaining clip on the keystone. It's very important that keeps the pairs from pulling loose as easily if that cable ever gets pulled on. Now we just rinse and repeat over and over again for every single cable until we get all of them punched down and attached to the patch panel. And then we can start testing to verify we've punched everything down correctly. Moment of truth. Time to start testing and see how well I terminated everything. And we got a pass on one. Found one that tested bad, so we're going to see how we miswired it. Oh, there it is. I got the green, white, and the brown, white mixed up. Let's go retest. That one is good now. If you'd like to see the video where I actually install the backboard and the network rack that you see in this video, at the end here, there's going to be two cards above. One of those cards will be that backboard installation video. And if you're curious to just see some other examples of service calls that you can see on Field Nation and Work Market and these other platforms, there will be another card that shows a playlist for my example service calls. As always, if you got value out of this, please subscribe to the channel, hit that like button. Let's get you out in the field making money. I'll see you in the next video.